stem cell Jesus got crucified. Anyways, they did a pretty deep investigation on Peter Nygaard's friend. Liter their cult. They literally think that he's like a like a Jesus, like he's God. And they're trying to keep him, you know, they said they would do anything because it's making my brain explode because they think like them dying, like he needs to hurry up and save the world from dying. You cannot make this stuff up, dude, because they are literally doing stuff that is really bad. That's why I said, is government even overseeing how they're doing this research? Because in here, in this investigation report, he's sitting there basically telling the women to go do whatever they need to do in order to get money from these donors, who these donors I had already named. They were like the Bitcoin people, Bezos. There's just a bunch of different people that are giving money. And so they were trying to, like, human traffic. Like, this is way beyond just sexual harassment of, like, will you go on a date with me? It's like, the one girl, like, he was trying to pick up on her and have sex with her while she was a minor. And then the other ones, there was actually two at least, where that he was telling them that they should go have sex with the donors so he can get more money for him his, his research. Because, and, and there's a quote, and the quote is so bad, I'm like, this is a total cult. And so the stuff that I was reading would lead you to really question, like, what the hell they're doing. Because they're willing to do these criminal activities in order to save the world from people dying. Like, they want everybody to live forever. Like, there's this, like, thing with it. And... I don't know who's all involved in that. I don't know if some of the people, like when I was pulling up the photos, like when they were at the Beverly Hilton, when they were showing some of the actors, like the Lou Diamond Phillips thing. Like, I don't know why the hell, like, he was kind of special to him. Uh, I was looking to see if he had any interest in any of this stuff, like the longevity thing. Because I was like, well, maybe that's why. Um, I didn't see any other thing, like, he's involved in any other weird stuff, um, but we don't know that, you know, it's kind of hard to say, because I, I didn't see this, like, long list of, like, anything else. I mean, if you go through the earlier clips of them, it's just like, here's my wife. Like, he brought his wife there, but so did a lot of other ones in here, and some of these guys are really bad. Um, we have been naming some of those guys. They could bring their wives all day. There's a whole bad thing and all that. So, but I don't know. That's why I'm like, some of these things, it seems like there's a connection in the fact that, um, they want to live forever. So then they're involved in, um, that aspect of his life versus maybe the other stuff. But I'm not sure because if you have a victim saying that he took his sperm and they believe that they're using it for these, um research things and then there's another video i put it in the list but it said something like they were testing like on children's blood like they were taking kids blood and testing it during research and i don't know if it said injecting it into adults like some weird thing but it's literally on this video and i'm sitting there going is there like, are they okaying this? Like, what's going on here? Like, I don't... That, this stuff is creepy. Like, it, it just sounds like a whole bunch of raping piece of shit old men that are just like... And in cult mentality. This weird cult mentality. And somebody else even said so, too. So, we'll kind of go through this. But... I'm just like... I <laughs> I would have never known this exist. I don't know. It, you know? You, you learn something new every day. Okay, so one of the other guys that's totally in involved in this, like, beyond, like, even... I, 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 I don't even want to hear any excuses from this guy, because it's like, they've had a long relationship. I don't know how long. It looks like it goes all the way back from, I don't know, more than 10 years. I don't I don't know when that started, but they, they, uh, Lou, Lou the Hulk, um... They've had this thing for a long time. Some of the problems in this is that... We're, we were talking about the, the the gang sheriffs and everybody else, and they're all corrupt. And so he was dealing with the corrupt people. So Baca, whatever, he got in trouble. And so, I don't know. But he went to their school. 
And there's a whole thing about this. So he has pictures. I'm creeped out because I actually moved over in this area. And this city where he went to is actually the same area where um, Kristen Smart's thing happened. And Paul got to Paul Flores and their family and everything. And he's over here in a Corvette sheriff car. I'm just like, what the hell is this? He attended the police academy in Southern California at the urging of L.A. County Sheriff Lee Baca. I, none of this. Don't trust none of this crap. So, um, then you see him with Bill Maher, dressed up as a sheriff, hanging out at the Playboy Mansion, right? He's dressed up as a sheriff, and he's with Bill Maher, and it's literally on Getty Images. And I'm like, yeah, so they all have this, like, connection through here. We all know there's a whole bad thing going on here. I think we could pretty much piece together that there's this whole ring going on over here. We already know what the sheriffs were doing. We already know about their rape gangs. We already know about all that stuff. And their human trafficking ring. That's why I was like, they literally are part of this whole thing. There's literally story after story after story after story. If you go through LA Times and start looking at that deeper, uh, things that you ignored, things that you thought were totally normal, that is part of this whole thing. Yes, this is bad right there. That's very bad. Uh, I don't know when the beginning was when he started doing that, but him helping him out is, is bullshit. So what I think happened here too, also the women involved in this, like the wives that are totally okay with this stuff, even some of Cosby's victims that have totally okayed this stuff, is that they're fine with seeing adult men with little girls. Because we just did that whole thing on it. And you know who finally just came out about that? Um, one of, one of my favorites from way back in the day, but I was really happy reading this, though. I keep saying, I keep telling people, I'm like, go get therapy, go get therapy, because they, they're, they're, um, I, she, I didn't see her saying any evil comments, but because of what she was saying, she would be the type at the time before she went to get therapy that she would be the type to be like there's nothing wrong with this and blah you know she would have been totally like that so there's a lot of people doing that and i keep saying go get therapy you literally need to go you could tell who hasn't gone to therapy you literally can because they're the ones defending all this nonsense and child rape so then they're the ones that when they see somebody like peter with a bunch of kids around they're just like well you know to each their own. Like, they're not even, they're not even flipping out over child human trafficking. They're, they're literally not. They're just like, okay, you know, because when I was like 12, you know, I was with this guy and it was totally cool. That's what's happening. It's not that they don't know. It's that they've been okay with it and then they didn't do anything. I'll read through this real quick and then we'll get on to the investigation about stem cell Jesus. It's pretty great. I mean, it's bad, but it's great. Like, because he's such a liar. And he's, 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 he's a sociopath. You're going to see it. Anyway, so Lannis Morissette was reportedly make statutory rape allegations in a new documentary. And she says, they're all pedophiles. <laughs> she finally did. That's why I was like, that's what she went to therapy. She finally went to therapy. She's like, um, the alleged abuses occurred in Canada where the age of consent was raised from 14 to 16 in 2008. And 16 still a child. So what I keep stressing is even though your state, your country, still has pro-rape rape kid laws, just because it happened to you at 16 doesn't mean that you're not a victim. So we're supporting those kids. Um, unfortunately, your state isn't, your country isn't, and Peter came out of Canada too, by the way, a lot of them did, uh, but they, they allow it, so then it confuses the kids, and then I'm like, I'm older than that, and I'm still a child victim, so is that really fair for me to be a child victim and you're not? You know, it's just a stupid thing, but anyway, it's like, yeah, so they need to be supported even though your country is allowing it, so you need to fight to raise that up to make sure no more kids are getting raped, right? In the in the in the country there, because they were literally just allowing Peter. Like if you look at the age thing, fourteen to sixteen, he was doing everything within the law. Um, I mean, as far as like if you wanted to date him, technically, 
that's why these guys go over there. They go to places where it's allowed. They're just like, what? I'm not breaking the law. Your your state allows me to. Yeah, she's like, it took me years in therapy to even admit that that there had been any kind of victimization on my part. Morissette said, repeatedly says, I would always say I was consenting and then I'd be reminded, hey, you were 15, you're not consenting at 15. Now I'm like, oh yeah, they're all pedophiles. It's all statutory rape. Yes. I know what the problem is with these victims. It's just like, sometimes you have to be just very straightforward. It's like, go to damn therapy. You need to go to damn therapy. They need to be told that. Like, they have, some of, they don't even know what's wrong. Like, some of these older ones, she's not old. She's, she's around the same age as me, but it's like, you're talking about, like, her parents and, you know, beyond. Like, they're not the ones saying, they're not the ones saying that to us. They're the ones trying to force people to get married, like, <laughs> under age. It's, like, gross. Okay, so she did that. We're paying attention to that because I guess some people didn't. And then, which is good. I applaud her. Thank you for going. Now you understand. And it's going to take a long time to undo the brainwash. I'm still learning stuff right now. I'm like, oh my God, I remember they wrote this and, you know, that whole thing from the last clip. I was like, it's just crazy because then you just constantly, you're just going to be constantly undoing the damages and you may never get done undoing the damages from all this because there hasn't been any changes either as far as the laws go for us um because these pedophiles really want to keep it legal okay these older yeah so we're gonna go into it because aubrey's gonna tell you how much of a predator he's pretty bad so investigations law firm executive summary investigation investigative findings was conducted okay executive summary concerning conduct by dr aubrey de gray september 10th 2021 let's see i mean this is like pretty detailed i mean <laughs> page one through like there's 18 pages here the summary is like on july 7th 2021 uh marcus law firm was re Okay, we don't need to go through all that. It says, on June 26, 21, complaint. Okay, so there's victim one, victim two, uh, Aubrey DeGray. And then it says, made comments of a sexual nature to them years earlier. So it says, on June 28, 2021, SRF initiated this investigation. On August 18, 2021, during the course of this investigation, we learned that on August 11th and 12, 2021, D. Gray emailed a mutual friend of his and victim number two, requesting the friend communicate with victim number two about her allegations against him. Yeah, so here it breaks down like what they found out in the investigation. Did Dr. D. Gray sign complaint? Victim number one emails of sexual nature on April 16, 2012, and May 11, 2012, when she was 17 and 18 and with the purpose of developing a romantic and or sexual relationship with her yes sustained so they found out that was true and it gets into like why and blah 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 did dr de gray make comments to victim number two during a dinner at oxford university stating words to the effect that she was a glorious woman who had a responsibility to use her womanhood to attract funding for SRF from donors, either stating or implying that she should use her sexuality or have sex with donors for that purpose. Yes, sustain. He did that. Which to me, that right there is human trafficking. He's literally trying to get the women here to go have sex for these guys to make get money for him basically to don't give donate money for him to go do his bullshit was dr degray involved in cutting funding for victim number two doctorate program at oxford because she reported a harassment claim at oxford against her then phd supervisor no so they found out something like when they denied it it was like before they made a complaint something weird the way they explained it but apparently not so, so did Dr. DeGray email a third party on August 11th and 12th, 2021? 
requesting that party communicate with victim two about the investigation and did those emails constitute a violation of the confidentiality the whole thing on the investigation right yes he did so and then they totally fired him like when he was doing that because he got interfered but there was actually more to that interference like he made threats like to her career we're not gonna read all that there was just certain things i wanted to read out of this it was pretty gross i know so he starts acting all innocent he's like on april 22nd 2021 I've just been told that you've been tweeting a low opinion of me, though without any explanation. I had no idea that you had any reservations about me, and I hope you know that I'm not scared of criticism and don't ever take it personally. I'd really appreciate knowing what I've done that caused, the, caused this. Happy to Skype, Zoom, whatever if you prefer. Hey, victim number one, a quick and delicate question, if you don't mind. It has recently been drawn to my attention that Victim number two wrote a few extremely harsh tweets about me a while back without providing any explanation, despite a lot of people requesting such. I emailed her at her workplace asking what was up. Honestly, I wonder if her account was hacked, since she, since she and I have never had so much of a trace of friction. But no reply. Do you by any chance know anything about this? Happy Zoom, Skype, whatever. If you don't want this in writing. He's just creepy, dude. Like, everything about him. Like, the more I went through this, I was like, oh my god, I literally hate this guy. So then, May 13th, 2020, he sent a follow-up to Victim 1 writing bump. And then on June 15th, 2021, he sent another email to Victim 1 writing Thanks in advance. Also, very sorry for putting you on the spot, re-victim 2, in the course of my cleanup of my board. I unfortunately discovered that a number of very derogatory and completely untrue claims about my past behavior have been doing the rounds. It was easy to clear my name once I found out what was being alleged. <laughs> Cause I don't know, this dude sounded like he was cleaning up the town. Probably mostly after Nygaard got arrested. I have a feeling, I have a feeling, they should have been on this from that minute, um, but it's not trivial to get the last word out to everyone who has heard the allegations. I'm assuming that victim two is one such, and I would be very happy to clear the air with her if she would be up for a quick call, but as I said, she hasn't replied to my request for one. I don't know, you sent her another email saying please or something? Yeah. Um, a victim number one do that Dr. Gray sent her inappropriate emails on April 16th, 2012 and May 11th, 2012 when she was 17 and 18. Victim alleged that DeGray sent these emails which were sexual in nature with the intent of developing a romantic and or sexual relationship with her. Uh, leading up to the emails, Gray had been an informal mentor to victim one since she moved to the United States in 2006 when she was age 12, among other things. So gross, dude. So anyway, uh, Gray in, submitted a, a recommendation letter for a grant com, um, victim one ultimately received in 2011. We reviewed the emails in question leading to uh, Gray's comments. Victim 1, age 17 at the time, reached out to Gray on April 16, 2012, requesting an introduction to someone. Gray responded the same day from his SRF email, writing, Hey, an admission for you? You probably know. And he puts, like, in public. And, and that I have a fairly adventurous love life. I'm, like, literally grossed out, because I'm, like, he's going to start, like, exposing, like, how disgusting he is, and I'm sure this guy has, like, the longest list of victims somehow, but no one said anything, and I'm not coy in talking about it, <laughs> but I've always taken care to avoid letting conversations stray in that direction with someone so young as you. I'm so grossed out, and I confess that that has always felt quite jarring, given that I could treat you as an equal on every other level. Maybe those days are over. <laughs> Back to business. 
Yes, I'll e introduce you. <sighs> Mind you, this guy's like almost 60 years old now. I think he's like 58 or something. Eight years ago. Like he was like 50. He's like almost close to 50 here or something. Something like that. Victim 1 did not respond. I wouldn't even know what to say with that. I At 17, if I read that, I'd be kind of like, that's creepy. And what the hell is he trying to say? I don't know if I'd really understand that, but I would know that it's creepy. I must confess. Because the way he's talking to you, like, he's so overly dramatic. A lot of these people are talking like that. They're very wordy. And they're trying to sound, like, all smart. But then, like, it's just a lot of dumb. I don't know, but... Victim 1 did not respond. A week later, just days after she turned 18 years old, Victim 1 emailed him on May 11th. Email to inquire if he would support her application to attend a forum. The same day, Gray responded to Victim 1, stating, Sure, no problem, just did. Expand your text below somewhat. Resisted the temptation to include hotter than hell among my five words. And he puts a big smiley face. Didn't tick the resume box because you didn't attach one, but presumably you would send one. Not sure you're actually eligible. There's something that says between 20 and 30 years of age at the time of nomination. But maybe they'll adore that. Good luck. In her interview, Victim One explained the email made her feel Gray was using the trust he garnered with me since I was a young child. Uh, Victim One sa said that, it, well, she felt that Gray was grooming her the whole time to be with them. And Victim One explained she did not feel she could report the emails at the time because of his position as a leader in the aging field. I felt trapped. And then Gray acknowledged writing and sending both emails to the victim and both his interviews and public social media. He stated that he unreservedly regretted sending victim one email. However, Gray denied he sent the email with any in improper motive. <laughs> no, there was a motive. There was a motive. I don't know what he's trying to say. He's like the biggest liar. He's just like, oh, I will. I, you know, I'm just joking sexually with the minor. And later, I knew her since she was 12, dude. Uh, during his interview, he further asserted he inserted a smiley emojo to ensure she would not take offense. I hate, I'd like, this is when you just really hate this guy. I have appealed to my ignorance of American ways. This pissed me off, too. He's acting like he can act like this to other women no matter where in the world. But it's just an American thing that this is called grooming and that you're being inappropriate. Like, he's blaming it on the American ways. I was new to America then. I can immediately see in my 2021 self I should not have written Resisted Temptation. Even though I put a smiley at the end, I thought that was ample to ensure nobody, especially someone I knew well, would take offense. Today, I would never write anything like that. No, but you're still a pedo, and you still would have went for her. So, I, you know, that whole... Prior to... He's almost 50... He's 58 or something, and he's just finding out in 2021 that it's bad to go and hit on a minor. I hate this guy. He got away with it this freaking long, but so did Peter, his buddy. That's why they're friends. So as, as he's, he's like, as for the May 2012 hotter than hell email, he, oh, he is, he has excuses for all this and none of them are good. He's like, I'm not exactly so ashamed of the hotter than hell comment. That is just British. What? He's freaking disgusting. Every part of this guy is disgusting. And yeah, it gets worse. Yeah, he admitted doing so, acknowledged the emails was inappropriate. Yeah, so it was saying how they came to their conclusion that it was true. Uh, victim number two um, says Gray made inappropriate comments to her during a dinner in either summer 2017 or 18 at Oxford. During victim two study at Oxford, Gray attended a conference following followed by and I I pulled up some of the donors. Maybe it was into 2014. I'm not sure, but that other guy was, ugh, gross. Um, I said that DeGray was seated 
to her right during the dinner at a long table hosting about 20 people. Victim 2 said she asked, she was asked by a then SRF executive to sit by Gray at the dinner. She believed she was asked with the intent that by being seated next to an attractive woman, Gray would not leave early. And this is like a whole setup. Like, I don't know what else is involved in here. But then it says, Victim 2 said that evening, Gray called her a glorious woman. Then suggested she should use a her womanhood or her womanly powers to get donors to give SRF money. She recalled these said words to the effect of glorious woman like you have a responsibility either stating or implying she should have sex with donors to fund him more. How is that not human trafficking? That straight up is. Like he's trying to put this pressure on her. What if she did it? Like, there must be other girls in here that maybe that actually happened and maybe they felt like they had to. I would hope not, but you never know because depending on the situations here and his buddy is a human trafficker. Like, everybody in this is a human trafficker. Like, I literally, the comments that were supporting this guy, they, those guys would totally human traffic you out any which way for the cause of this. It gets worse, though. Like, to me, I would arrest this guy. I don't know why he's not arrested. He shouldn't be arrested just for his damn complicit bullshit with Peter. But, um, doing this, like, an attempted human trafficking thing. And she's not the only one. There's, like, another one, I think, in here that had it happen. Anyway, says, victim two did not recall the e end of the evening, noting she was crying and was likely intoxicated. She believes something else negative may have happened that she does not recall. Victim 2 said she left the dinner upset. His responses, he denied her allegations. He denied he directed statements that in any way suggested she should seek to obtain more funding from donors. He denied he used the word she attributed to him at the dinner. He also said she was one of the smartest and most talented interns. SRF hat. Um, he made a similar comment to that outlined by victim two in 2014 to another young woman. And Gray recalled he approached her and had a conversation at an unspec unspecified time in an unspecified location in July 2021. Investigative interview Gray stated he solicited her in that com conversation to join through crusade of defeating aging by using all the weapons we have, including weapons that are not just intellectual. And Gray explained that this was an encouragement of her to use her femininity. He acknowledged that women was unimpressed by his comment. Uh, uh, Gray emailed the woman explaining his comment. This is so crazy. Oh my God. Hey, so, hmm, it has been drawn to my attention that you took more <laughs> exception some time ago that I'd appreciated to my discussion of how you might maximize your contribution to the long, longevous mission. Yeah, they literally have like this cult thing going on right here and it starts kind of coming out. When I was much younger, I had a couple of relationships with women who were very smart, but teenage. I was reading that going, oh my god, okay, so he's almost 60, and when he's saying when I was much younger, he could literally just be going when I was 30. And then, but then he talks about teenage, which sounds like they're minors, I don't know, but he's like, had not had time to demonstrate it. It was important to them that I not compliment them too much on their very considerable physical attributes. And I respected that at the time and still do, which obviously he didn't, but, um, cause he was flirting with trying to have sex with minor. But for those of us who have already achieved plenty of life and who thus, I hate how they talk. Like he's trying to sound like really smart and every part of what's in here is dumb as shit. But anyway, he's like, and thus have nothing to prove. The same does not apply. I have a mission in life and I have no comp compunction I don't know whatsoever and furthering it by means that have nothing to do with my intellect whether that be my ability to 
<laughs> to feign, I don't know, reason of, reasonably, or re he's a word salad. Like, he's just saying a bunch of garbage. Like, reasonably aristocrat accent of my own physical attributes. Similarly, similarly I view it not is not, uh, not only acceptable but positively recommended that those of my colleagues who are similarly committed to the same mission should take whatever advantage may be available or whatever attributes they may possess to influence those who have major potential to further that mission and to the extent that they do so without even thinking about it that they not be all coy and in denial that they do so there's a war on my friend there's no time to be all pompous about some hypothetical greater value of those inviolable features that one has earned through hard work over those that one one was born with we need to work with that with what we have however we obtained it so there smiley face it's reminding me of like joining like the keith Rainier shit like it's like what in the hell dude like, you could have really condensed this paragraph to, ladies, um, I'm going to human traffic you out, and you really should just want to have sex with these guys, because, you know, that's what I believe that you should do. That's it. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like this whole, like, yeah, I'm trying to be philosophical about being a criminal, um, and I have, like, literally no regard for any woman on earth other than living forever. No, we don't want you living forever, Gray. Mm-mm. I'm on a mission to stop that. <laughs> it's, like, it's just like crazy. It's like, that's the biggest nightmare is having Grey live forever. Oh, God. Um, raping all the women. So, Grey explained the women's negative reaction served as a complete uh, recalibration for him regarding the way that he approached women. Grey said that since then, he has never said anything near to that any time after or before either. He said... It is just not possible I could have said anything like this to victim number two in 2018. I would not dream of saying anything remotely along those lines. I have not used any of my staff in terms of womanhood in that way. I put my scientists next to donors to talk science. Yeah, bullshit. We know about the science world, okay? Everything going on there. Y'all hanging out, raping kids. So then, this was the worst, though. I was like, what the? Oh my god, it gets into this whole thing that just goes dark. It's like cult and uh Gray believes com victim number two somehow learned about his comment to this woman and reattribute it to victim two. I don't know, he's trying to say me I don't know, what the hell? Like he's he's a ball full of lies. She stated she did not share this information nor did she know victim two further the recipient stated she personally had no recollection of this email noting it was 90 percent likely she did not even read gray's email and gray said that although he would not have made the statement to victim two he does in fact believe those in aging industry need to use whatever means necessary to fight the war on aging this is the so crazy ass and he wrote this, during my interview with Gray on J July 14th, 2021, he explained, That is what I thought. It is at the same level of women in World War II sleeping with Nazis to get information. It is a war against aging here. You have to persuade people to give money. This is honestly who I am. I am the general. I'm like, this dude is fucking psychotic. Like, he's like his own self-god. Like, I kind of was, I swear to God, I read people so well today because before I even knew who the hell he was, before he ever spoke a word, like, there was that, that clip, you know, that Peter, he was, like, showing all his personal friends, like, all the people that he loved. And I'm like, this guy just literally stood out. I'm like, oh my god, there's Jesus. Like, this whole thing about him. But you know something's bad. Like, you literally know something's bad. And he's kind of like, it's almost like, I don't know if he's like a more of a mastermind in doing some of this. Like, I don't know. He thinks he's a god. He's like, oh, I'm the general, dude. And I'm like, dude, they're their own mafia. Like, each of these guys. That's why I'm like, he's not like following 
Peter by any means. He thinks he's his own god. And I think Peter looks at him like he's a god. And Peter probably sees him to save him forever. And I don't know if Michael Jackson was dealing with this guy either. That's why I was like, ah, we need to really look at all this. Because this is some crazy ass crap. This isn't like, please make my skin look younger thing. This is, this is a cult of some sort like the Keith Rainier thing. Because they're literally talking about taking bulls for him. They think it's funny. Some of them, but some of these guys were literally going on that these complaints here are not as serious as the Harvey stuff and that we should not go after him because he's going to save the world. That's it. They want to make it an excuse. They're doing the Michael Jackson thing too. Like, Michael did the greatest music, so we shouldn't even go after him even if he touched a bunch of little boys. It's like, dude, Michael's totally up in here, so uh, th there's nothing good. There's nothing good over there, you guys. Um, but then it's trying to understand, like, what everybody has done in here and what's going on. So, this guy obviously thinks he's his own god. Like, he's just like, you have to persuade. He is a sociopath. This is like, everybody's a pawn. Everybody's a pawn, and I am the leader. So, you women, I am going to pimp you out. That's the first thing that comes out of his mind. I'm going to pimp you out. You need to go get me money while I sit back here. And then you need to, like, bounce on my dick. Like, that's basically him. That's him right there. And then I was just like, that, that, that paragraph. He's like, sleeping with the Nazis. You should go sleep with the bad guys. You should go sleep with Bezos. You should go sleep. Those are all the donors. Yuck. So I'm sitting here going, how many times did this actually happen, though? And how do you know that there's not something else going on outside of him trying to set these women up? He may be setting other women up that's not even part of this. He has put himself out there saying, I am not above human trafficking women at all. This is scary. And he has this mentality. And then he lies about it. And then he's like, oh, well, actually, you know, I wasn't really sorry about saying that to a minor. <laughs> he's arrogant. He's a sociopath. He's a straight up sociopath. So then, then he, and then he's trying, oh God. Then he pointed out to victim two's personal website, my many flaws. I don't know. I hold great. Oh, I don't know. He was, I don't know. He was doing this whole thing of critiquing victim two, I think. Yeah. So there's some Mary, you know, they found that it was true because they had backup, you know, like the whole thing where the emails, they found it to be true and other emails or other statements, there's two people saying the same thing, yada, yada. So they explain how they came to this and blah, blah, blah. And that's how it came to, he's guilty of that. Okay. Then it gets into the funding thing and they came to a thing where they didn't think that he had anything to do with that in particular. I did. I found it. I was like, there was a different Facebook link that they gave this comment was so freaking bad though okay august 10th okay this is what i want to read his name is um ben go g-o-e-r-t-z-e-l chief scientist at novamente llc vice chairman at humanity and chief executive officer at singularity net study mathematics at temple university i don't know but anyway he wrote this massive monologue underneath his post he's like well all this really gives absurdity a bad name now doesn't it i am psyched that abusers like harvey have been taken down in recent years and the situations in which so many women in the film business have had to perform sex acts to move their careers forward was obviously completely nasty and unethical and it's great that this era is at last long last coming to an end it's like hi do you not realize that the guy you're talking to his best buddy is a human trafficker that rapes children and women like i don't know but it, the way it was just sort of like this thing but he will get into it and yes, I totally understand that extreme cases. I'm like, if I hear another guy or wom or even woman talk about the scale of extremes to what people do, like the girl, the little girl that he grew up with, with that was 12 and he went and hit on, 
could actually have more PTSD than somebody that literally got raped in their sleep. Like, seriously, like the way that how they process it, because you don't know how they process it. And so you're not the one to determine that. And that's not scientific, by the way, but we're going to like their whole analysis of this. Um, so yeah, but this is men. They're like, I'm going to talk like I'm sound like I'm smart and maybe I went to school and shit, but I'm actually really dumb because we're both like targeting young kids because we're so smart that we need a young dumb woman i don't know something weird um but then he's like and yes i totally understand that extreme cases like harvey harvey's not extreme harvey is like every other man and not only not the only problem to be addressed re-sexual harassment in the workplace and otherwise there are all sorts of less exaggerated situations and behavior in the same spirit out there across almost all industries institutional sexism is a thing and just like institutional racism is a thing institutionalized sexual harassment is a widespread and terrible thing however i was like oh my god here we go here we go one still needs to look at each case for what it is each individual case of alleged sexual harassment involves individual people's lives and lives, work, etc., etc. And in this case, very important life works ha that has real potential to save billions of human lives. Are pr I swear to God, I was like, no. This is the, I mean, this is worse even than the Michael thing because they're like, oh, his music. This, they're like, he's going to save lives, so we need to let him rape all the women and children. That's what they're arguing here. I'm like, mm, you went to a college. It doesn't teach, it doesn't give you an IQ. You're lucky you went to a college. Anybody who has a lot of money can go to a college. It doesn't give them brains, okay? So anyway, it says, um, and even makes an existential difference to the future of humanity. Cult. In this case, from what I've read so far, accusations against Aubrey are simply not so extreme or clear cut. <laughs> well he just lost the investigation okay so um but he this asshole is determining the extremities of these uh, these uh, this is like literal attempted human trafficking i'm just like you have no place to determine that i love it when men do this it's like this, um this is not so extreme for you ladies let me tell you i'm gonna tell you for you and an inadvisable but not really harassing sort of but not quite come on email to a 17 year old oh, now he's minimizing going after a minor from years ago okay would you say this about slavery um because trust me when i say ignorant things they they people i will jump on me so we're gonna jump on you uh, like this, that right there. He's like, um, who cares that you know? He, come, he was like uh, going on for a, a minor years ago. That would also mean he's probably going to go on minors even right now, because he's a pedophile. So yeah, and then it says inappropriate sexual jokes allegedly. Not they were not jokes. They were not jokes. They found that he made those comments because of other statements he made that they really need to use their body to move forward because of the end of the world. This whole thing of like, you just need to do whatever you need to do so we can save us from dying. Yeah, they were not jokes because at the end he said that it was a joke when the victim is acting uncomfortable. He's like, I'm just, oh, you're not down with it. <laughs> just joking. That's what guys always do. He was not joking. So then, and it says not sustainable substantiated by witnesses at least so far no it was like they wrote this like before the investigation was even over and posting this type of shit so then it said made to colleagues Celine at dinner even supposed sup <laughs> even supposing the jokes Celine alleged were made no these are not jokes these were damn th I don't know why see now they want to make it all a joke so anytime a guy does sexual harassment I always tell a joke you know I That'll make it totally different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Which I am now going to assume at this point. All sorts of misunderstandings and misrememberings can occur. This sounds to me like some now judged culturally inappropriate revolved joking while drunk. 
no, when I'm drunk, I don't turn into a rapist. So, yeah, I don't start, I was all of a sudden going, oh my god, I'm drunk. I'm going to start human trafficking little boys. Like, it just came out of me because of the drink. No, that's not how that goes. That's why I say, the it, going to college doesn't give you an IQ. That right there is stupid. Just straight up stupid and average. So it says maybe the current generation is different, but in my generation, and here's where he outs himself, and I was like, oh my god, if you have any victims, I hope they read this, because now it's easier to bust you. But he goes like this, because he's stupid. So he's like, maybe the current generation is different, but in my generation, I'm 54, four years younger than Aubrey, flirting with or talking about flirting with colleagues of the opposite sex who might be younger or older than oneself did happen from time to time making edgy ribald jokes with colleagues over dinner or drinks also happened he's like what i totally did all these misconducts and i never got in trouble come on good i hope that somebody knows you all your colleagues know you and when they out you this is right here because there's, there's no going back you literally just outed yourself so at least it'll make the investigations much easier so they can read this and go oh he actually admitted doing that he had no problem doing that so, yeah i was like these people are not bright i was like wow I, 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 that's men so he's like i'm open to the possibility wait 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 was like um Making edgy, yeah, to drink all else out. Okay, I'm open to possibility that the these aspects of culture have wrapped up aspects that have been... Why do they talk like this? It's really annoying. It's like, just get to the point, dude. They're, like I said, they're just trying to sound smart with words. Like, people think that the more words that they use, it, that shows, like, your intellect, which it doesn't. But... Um, I'm open to the possibilities that these aspects of culture have wrapped up aspects that have been different. Like, this is just annoying. Harmful to women with other aspects that have been broadly positive for men and women, both men and women. But canceling everyone who has done these things would basically mean canceling a huge percentage of the human population. Yes, you bet. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, it does. This reminded me of sinks argument when i was talking about when they were promoting child rape and he i think it was him that was laughing saying oh when they were raping little boys right and they were like if that was rape that mean everybody was doing it like that wouldn't be rape something like trying to blame that because everybody has been raping their sons um or letting their sons get raped that it wouldn't be rape because most people allow it that it wouldn't be rape. That's the argument. Yeah. So that's what he's trying to argue here. He's like, because a huge percentage of the pop. See, this is what we've been saying. This is what women keep saying. And they keep calling us liar. But then he understands that it means that a huge percentage of the population, which is 50% men, whatever that that is, have done these things and they never got in trouble for it. So then he's like, well, that wouldn't make sense to cancel them all. I'm fine with canceling all your raping houses, okay? So we don't need you. And trust that there's going to be a smarter woman than this gray guy that will get into science and be much better than him and not rape a whole bunch of kids, you know, or tell men to go prostitute themselves to go get them donors. You know what I mean? The fear, the white fear. This is like white fear over here, this guy. He's like, yeah, it's fine, important, even if it's at diff times difficult. Canceling everyone who has partaken in culturally normal behaviors. Normal to who? Men, right? Women don't have the power to make these laws. Men are the ones that wanted to rape seven-year-olds and make it legal, like on book. So you're calling that cult culturally, culturally normal. But slavery was culturally normal. Behaviors at some degree of difficulty, complexity, wrapped up. I was like, shut up with your damn word salad crap. It's like, I don't, I, he's just trying to sound. This The stuff reported about Aubrey so far in this thread suggests to me. I cannot deal with these people, dude. Nobody talk like that. Can you imagine being in the room? This guy's like. The stuff reported about Aubrey so far in this thread suggests to me, at most, that perhaps he should reflect on some of his past interactions and modify some of his style of interactions to become better match current norms. 
and to better reflect recent insights of the impact of various typical male behavior patterns on females it totally does not does not suggest to me unless this is the tip of the iceberg which as aubrey knows there is currently utterly no evidence for so he's automatically he will automatically side with aubrey no matter what's being said here not listening to the victims that aubrey should be given a harvey weinstein type treatment and be banned from the anti-aging field He's like no evidence for him to be banned forever. No, he is. He's he's actually probably worse than Harvey because I haven't heard stories about Harvey like actually human trafficking children out. Oh, I don't know. I mean, that could be in her somewhere and he just hasn't been caught yet. Like, I don't know. Like some whole other thing. But um, no, Aubrey's worse. Aubrey just got away with it. So, okay. So this is the guy you guys call God. I just want to point this out. And he's supposed to be this brilliant guy, but he cannot be brilliant enough to know that what he did was bad. Just right here. This is like the most average, and you just, you just need an average intellect to like know that all the things that he did was wrong. And that's it. So, you know what I mean? Maybe the God that you're worshiping is really a dumbass, which I think he is, but you're not going to be saved. You're not going to, you're not going to live forever. I'm sorry. I hate to break it to you. It's kind of like this weird religion here because they think, they literally think he's going to make them live forever. Like this is really the foundation here and why they're really upset. They don't care about the women in the story. They're just like, what? We constantly rape women. So why are we doing something now? Like, this is a normal thing that we do. We normally abuse women. This is an argument. I'm like, I know you guys don't have a high IQ, so you can use all the words you want, make these fancy little sentences, and talk like you're hoity-toity. You're dumbasses. So he keeps going on. I can see that there may be extreme cases where an individual is observed to be causing so much harm due to their abuses of their professional role that trying to get them canceled fast by a public social media activity may be more ethical than waiting for the legal system to rigorously investigate allegations against them. I do not see evidence that Aubrey constitutes such an extreme case. <laughs> I'm, I'm just curious what would, like, nothing, obviously nothing. I'm, I'm just glad he's, he's smarter than the room, and, and women should just all put up with this, because he's a god. He's a god, he's gonna save them from dying. From what I could tell, the rapid fire canceling of Omri over these accusations is itself way, way more inappropriate than the email Aubrey sent to a child eons ago. <laughs> So you're fine with raping kids. Thank you for being open. I can't wait for somebody to come out after this guy. Because I'm like, dude, you just you laid it all out for us. I think it's this guy that knows Peter Nygaard's son. But I'm going to go through it because they kept putting comment after comment. So one of the guys in this, it's either him or somebody else in it, knows Peter's son. And, but... The good thing was that he said that they hadn't talked to them since the since he got arrested, like during that whole thing. So I was like, yeah, I would hope that his son is not communicating with these rapists. This guy's a rapist too, obviously. Um, he's not having any problems with going after children either. This is what he's arguing this whole thing. So they tell they tell us who they are. We just read it. We know exactly what they're okay with. They're okay. This guy right here, he's okay with raping children. He's okay with raping women. He's okay with all these things to do whatever, whatever, to whatever purpose that he, he wants in his life, you know. So he's not for equality, he's for don't even investigate because he doesn't think it's even worth the time. You know, that, that's, he's, this is the whole argumentation here. He's like, our society seems to be veering into quite a dangerous direction, you know. Yeah, because all of us white men are going to get arrested for raping the kids. We need to find a way to improve our culture in a direction of kindness, understanding, and inclusiveness without any reactively canceling as predators, people for inappropriately flirting. Well, what would you call That's what a predator is. Yeah, that's kind of what that, you know. And it's not really kind to, uh, you know, go for some children and telling women 
to have sex with people so guys can make money. Yeah, it's called human trafficking. I'm just kind of, you know what I mean. But then, but he gets worse, I think. So he's like, this sort of thing almost makes me pessimistic about our future as a species. I eh, probably should be because we really could do without you. I mean, if we can even manage this sort of matter in a rational way, how can we expect to cope with AGI and the singularity of the obsolescence? Whatever. It, he's just like going on. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I think Aubrey is going to overcome this unfortunate attempt to cancel him. And I think humanity is going to overcome its morality and stupidity. Oh, well, you're calling people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And other obstacles and building on the work of Aubrey and so many other amazing innovators move on the way to be mo mod. We can live without. You know, they're a dime a dozen. Let me tell you. There's a lot of brilliant people in this world, and once you remove these assholes, it makes room for the most brilliant women, right? We don't need this. You know, we don't need it. You need to let go of your God. You need to let go of your God right here. He's an idiot. <laughs> I was like, he's a predator, child-raping predator idiot. I have nothing but empathy and for the genuine pain and struggle that these two women, the victims, no, he doesn't. He literally said all this shit and he puts that. He's like, seems to be experiencing in the context. Oh, so you're saying you, you have witnessed how they're in pain, but you totally minimize it at the beginning. Like, it's not that serious. I have, no, this guy don't know shit. It seems to be experiencing in the context of their prior interactions with Aubrey and in whatever the other contents are relevant I do tend to without any absolute certainty believe in their reports in this in the sense that yeah so basically see here's the thing this whole argument here his bullshit that he's going on as I've stated a million times before these guys believe you they believe you it's not about belief they believe you but here's what he's arguing he's like I actually believe them uh, I do tend, without an absolute certainty, believe in the reports in the sense that they are reporting what they actually felt, remembered, experienced. I am also pretty sure that Aubrey did not intend... Now, oh, all of a sudden he knows Aubrey's brain that he didn't intend to cause anyone negative or troubling experiences. No, every man does. They literally want to harm women because they don't care. You know? And he's like, even if it turns out that he did so inadvertently... No, now he's just making excuse after excuse for the man. He's like, I believe you ladies, but I think he's a saint and he totally didn't want to really fuck you. I'm sorry, he didn't really want to human traffic you out. He's a saint. He didn't do nothing wrong. We got to protect Aubrey. I know he tried to touch you, but it was for, he was trying to be gentle. Like, he, he's trying to argue this type of bullshit. Has nothing to do with him calling them liars. That's really at the root of all this. So I go, no, listen to the people when they're talking shit to you. I was like, it really isn't about belief. It's about this kind of shit right here. Like this whole, it took him paragraphs and paragraphs to even get here. But then he's like, um, but life is a zero sum game and the solution to interactions causing someone pain and struggle is not necessary, necessarily, necessarily, I don't know, as we put it, to cancel and other people involved in these interactions. Oh, we shouldn't arrest anybody for harming children and raping women. You know, or trying to. We should have no laws at all. Guys should be able to do whatever the fuck they want. He has no line. He's just like, we should never, we should never bust, like, guys. We should never bust guys. Like, they should be able to do whatever the hell they want. This is his argumentation. He's like, the beautiful, terrible, freaky mess we humans are in is just far subtler than that. I don't know. He's making, he's talking about... Apologies if this message is too scattered, rambling for some folks' taste. It wasn't originally intended to be so long, but these matters do have a lot of nuance. However, no, they don't. Only for you, because you've done all those things, and you're trying. You're actually trying to make excuses for yourself and how you think that we should treat you. No, I would throw you in prison. So he's like, however, the foolishness and moral wrongings of a current rapid-fire cancellation of Aubrey does not have so much nuance it's pretty clear <laughs> i love and this was four weeks ago so the report came out the other day so your jesus was crucified 
on the fucking cross. <laughs> like, so I loved it because he went through this whole thing and then it's just like, uh, yeah, dude, you're wrong. You're the only, you're wrong here. He got fired after this too, I think. Oh, so he goes, yeah, it was him. I never met Peter, by the way. I do know his son, Kai, who is a pretty, ero ero I don't know, futurist thinker and longevity enthusiast. I don't know. I, I mean, I, he's been speaking out to help out victims on the side um, during this thing. So, um, I don't know what his thinking is on this longevity crap right now. Because it is basically a call and daddy probably got him into that. I mean, there, there's a big question here. Like, with the victims of it. It's like, he was literally... They said that they, they paid that kid... $200 or something, whatever it was on the thing that I did on it. And they took sperm and they think that they used it for this longevity thing. And now that you read what Aubrey said, that he's willing to basically human traffic women to get the money to do whatever you need to do to get this war, this war on longevity of this war on not dying, that they are willing to do things unethically to do that and that's what's scary about this whole thing so it's actually there laid out it's not just some weird thing just pulled out of our butts it's like there was allegations and then this is happening and then what the things that he's saying and the way that you idiots are acting as a cult that you are willing to do these things to harm children or whatever you're doing an ethical research to go to this extreme to do these things and that you you should because it's a war on before you die like your life that's what that's what's so freaking whack about this whole thing i was like you couldn't even make it up like i wouldn't this is just a whole other universe of stuff i wouldn't that's just not i didn't even know this existed i knew people um were trying to live longer I knew that people were trying to do research, you know, on skin care, trying to look younger, that kind of thing. This is a whole other thing where they never want to die. And they literally feel like in their lifespan, like they got to hurry up and do whatever it takes to make sure that they don't ever die. Like some sort of thing like that, which then has in turn it into a call. And this is their argumentation of... We need to let him rape everybody um, because he is a god and we need him. And so we just need to ignore all that, basically. But there's all these people that agree with them. The comment that he just made, that whole thing, they're like, Well said, Ben. What is also so unhelpful are the calculations that are most likely afoot. I cannot sound how these people talk. Do we lose more by the negative press present pres presentation of... Aubrey retaining his position by Aubrey's departure. Dude, this is so annoying. I could never get into this. Like, I don't know. This crowd, I don't know if it's like... They're like Suedo intellectuals or what. I, I don't know. It's just really weird. It's all... Read an article that showed up. Those associated with Epstein and Nygaard are pretty likely to mean that he probably did it and it needs to be kicked out of the door. And very likely that the people Epstein associated with had very misogynistic attitudes. Would Epstein invite an argument? Yeah, like a feminist to his parties? Fuck no, he wouldn't. Yeah. See, these guys had a problem with me. That's what I was saying during this whole thing is uh, I'm not down with this shit. I never was down with this shit. But they still tried. But that's the thing is that these guys still tried. They would try to manipulate the situation or they thought like the more that they tried to do these things to me that I would somehow give in, you know, you know, minus the time that the, the predator talked me into going to this dinner thing. But then what happened was it, they tried to use that as a weapon later, which was, you know, they tried to do this whole thing and I'm like, you literally cannot jump over the part where you literally got a minor, you know, there's this whole thing to it. And, you know, it's like years of this, like, grooming thing that these people were doing. But then trying to send me over to Peter Nygaard's fucking buddy's house. Like, that guy. I was like, I didn't even realize that that guy owns both those clubs. Like... 
trust. I have been searching for days through my paperwork. Like, I'm like, what are these people's names? I mean, I found some things. Like, I found some things during that time. But uh, not what we're looking for. The the rappers that were at the Beverly Hilton. Um, all the different things in this. And I'm like, dude, it's crazy. Because they were literally, if, if that was the case. I'm like, they were literally trying to set me up. Knowing that I'm not down with none of this type of shit. But they were just like, go there. And I'm like, I'm not going to that house. I'm not going to a billionaire's house. Why am I going to go show up at a door? You know, it's like, why don't you call them and tell them to go do something, right? It was really weird. Um, I'm not going to get myself in that situation. I'm not stupid. They're like treating me like I'm some, like little 14 year old like i'm like oh i'm gonna go just show up at the beverly hilton with these two guys i've never met i was like they were supposed to come and help so i was like if they're not gonna do that we're not gonna get set up in a situation like that but and why am i gonna go to the beverly hilton like what the hell is that you know so they were doing that that's why i was like dude that should i mean there's a lot more in this besides that those stories but i was just like um that was a specific one that was the whole thing was like a mystery. I was like, who are these guys and why they keep trying to set me up to some weird situation? And I'm telling everybody the cops did nothing because the cops were involved. I was like, the cops are involved. They're the ones that are illegally going through my bedroom having me live with them. It's like, they're totally part of that. And I'm just like, they didn't do anything. And the investigation was terrible. There's no way in hell they did an investigation on anything that I reported here in one year. Because you know how long that we've been actually investigating this thing? Like, the, the, there's a lot of things in it. 20 some odd years. Because it started when it all came down in 2001 when I started reporting all the people. Um, and from that point, it was reported. Then I had to wait for the report. Then they totally did this whole hide and, you know, we're going to cover up for all these guys and everything. And then they started targeting me even more. Like, they were already targeting me, but they were targeting me even more to where these paper, this paperwork was being sent to multiple places that I wasn't able to get it. And then when I got it later, like, I think I got forwarded to other places or something. I didn't get it right away. And so then, then these other situations happened, and then the ER thing happened, and even that they didn't investigate properly. They didn't even follow protocol for that situation. And then not too long after that, that's when LAPD's like, come live with us, you know, that bullshit, and then they did the other thing. So there's a series of events, like they're doing things to ward off me, because I have a lot of information on a lot of fucking people, Okay. And I'm aware of that, but I don't know what it is. I didn't know what this is, right? So it's like, I don't know what the, what information is it that they're, they're freaked out on. Because they obviously went through my bedroom a million times looking for something. And I'm like, what are they looking for? Like, I'm totally confused. You know, like they're looking for something. And I have like tons of information that's gone. Like there's notebooks, there's things that have been written down. And a case file, which is kind of relevant, that something else came in the media the other day, yesterday, that I'll get into on another clip. I don't want to make this go way, way long, but um, that's missing. I save all my, all my legal cases. So I'm like, why is that missing? Because I actually sued that guy, and he's a suspect here in possibly being a hitman. And so I'm sitting there going, where's that? I have the case before it because there's another case where somebody hit me and um, in the car and that is a weird one too and I was here illegally during that um, when I wasn't supposed to be here right as a kid and um, but the crash happened right after like my 18th birthday or something it was a really weird thing this other it was a setup like there was a setup crash like Somebody tried to get me to crash into them, and then they took off, and then somebody else hit me. But it's the case that happened after that, which the guy, he just purposely threw me into a truck. Like, he just purposely, he just floored it, and he, then he tried to take off, and then I caught him. But at the time, I was not aware of another case that was going on with somebody else, and I think it got brought up 
after that. It was either right after it or before that they told me this thing. But I didn't associate the two at the time for whatever reason. I don't know, because I didn't have anything to do with that case. But um, we'll get into that on another day. Yeah, because even on the comments on these Facebook ones, so there's two Facebook links I'll put in, in here. Um, one of the ladies like, this is like a cult vibe. It's like, yeah, it is. Totally. I, 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 was, I was not expecting that. I was thinking like people that are trying to live longer, not the forever thing, and they're just like, it's, they this is a war that that's their thing they're all this is war i'm like dude you guys are psychotic i am sure aubrey is extremely disgusted by je's hor horrifying personal life doing essential nobody the nygaard situ situation i have not read about in so much detail <laughs> this is why you guys are a bunch of dumb asses i i'm probably the most knowledgeable on the nygaard story over anybody because the the U.S. is not covering it. And we may have run across them. Like, there's a whole thing to this. Um, and at least some of his friends. Uh, that's why I was like... And then one of the ladies that's pictured with him went to my school, allegedly, out here, in Hoityville. It's just the people in this... You have to be careful, because I was like, when I was talking about this yesterday, I was thinking, oh my god, that guy totally erased this comment now. Maybe I should have waited. That's what I was thinking, but it was actually a different link. That could happen, too, and I gotta be on top of that, because sometimes it'll, it'll, they'll get spooked. They're like, ugh. And then they erase their, try to get rid of their, um, their evidence. Um, we're not getting rid of it now, because we just read all of it. <laughs> so even if you erase it, Ben... He's like, I'm sure Aubrey is extremely disgust. Oh, yeah, okay, so he's going on. This guy's such an idiot. Uh, he's like, uh, which I don't assume, but his son does not like his dad. That, so that's the other thing. He's like, I know his son. It's like, well, you should know that he his son does not like his dad. Because his son got raped by, his dad made somebody rape him and his brother, right? He's like, I'm sure Aubrey would think so. What? Which I don't assume by default, though, that would be to be very fucked up as well. Oh, wait, you're going to start questioning the Nygaard thing? He's like, and I'm sure Aubrey would think so, think so, do? Okay, yeah, I know. I have talked to Kai. I have not talked to Kai since these scandals with his father broke out as it happens. Thank yeah, so you don't know that he does not talk to his dad. Um, again, though, taking research, well, I don't know when Kai stopped talking to his dad. I thought they were, they stopped talking a long time ago. I'm not sure. Like, I hadn't really dug into his thing. I know that there's a shitload of pictures of him from the, all, you know, all this stuff here, too. Like, they did a video with him talking about the longevity thing. Like, he was really knowledgeable about it. So I was like, oh, God, he got him on to this. So he's, like, off talking about it. And then he's at events, like, with a lot of these people and being photographed. So, up in the past decade. And then, I don't know when it was that they, I, I don't know. There was a whole thing, like, they hate their dad. But then, you know that whole thing was going on so I'm not I'm not really clear when that came together when they got upset about it but I'm not sure if he if the kid if the sons here's the other thing to it though I think if the sons harmed anybody because dad had like let him or something um it that stuff's gonna get complicated so I don't know I don't know any other thing but this guy uh knows the son so he's like, again, though, talking research money, taking research money from an individual organization does not imply an endorsement. One can think as well how many shiny, fancy SV startup tech companies took money from SoftBank Vision Fund, which got a lot of money from Saudi and UAE sovereign wealth funds, which have a goal of profiting governments whose ethics are, shall we say, not very agreeable to most modern Westerners. Does hiding the unethical nasty shit associated with one's funding behind several levels of indirection make it much more ethical somehow 
Obtaining money for good causes and valuable research from resources with ethical issues does not strongly implicate one in those ethical issues. I think he's trying... Wait, for the, the matter I knew... A number of female scientists who received money from J.E. for the research who had nothing to do with this fucked up personal life and I would suppose you're not going to say that accepting his money somehow makes it likely that they sympathize with his sick provocative. Oh no, yes, yes. You betcha. Because you don't know the story. Hey, I'm reminded why I rarely use Facebook though. Easy to get drawn into various sorts of dialogues back to work and I hope Aubrey gets lots of research work done too and not being too distracted by all this stuff we need to super, we need super longevity solved ASAP that's just some crazy ass shit no you would know because Peter was not really hiding he wasn't hiding anything he just kind of did what he did and then they were really open on these parties they were open on the parties they were open on all that shit so it's not a thing where they're like, oh, we should hide that my girlfriend's like 12. It's like, I think they were pretty like, I think they brought one of the minors here. And that's why he's getting in trouble for trafficking a minor into California or wherever it was from the Bahamas, I think it was. But he had other friends from Bahamas come out here. None of these people have gotten in trouble. Like none of the rest of the people in this. And it's like, I don't know who those people brought with them. And I am i don't know if Peter paid for it. They may have paid for it. Because, like, all the people at these, like, events at the Beverly Hilton, a lot of them are his friends from the Bahamas. And they're, like, doing the interviewing. So it looks all fake. It's just, like, it's, like, half of them, like, he knows they're just friends from back home. And then they're, they're like, all interviewing him. And then, so, and then they start er interviewing the friends. They're like, what do you think of him? And they're just like, he's the greatest guy on earth. He the, has the greatest heart. Of course, they're going to say all this bullshit, right? So it just adds to this whole, like, fake Hollywood picture that you already know. Like, everybody's just fake. Like, they're just fake. And then one of Woody Allen's 16-year-old, wow, she's a victim. But she, I don't know. They did a whole story on her. And she was at his party, too. And she's with this old, old, old fart, the man on the moon dude. And that dude, that dude is like the biggest pervert. I was like, oh my god, that guy's gross. And she's like hanging out with them. And then he starts gawking over Sandra Bullock. I was like, dude, oh my god, what the hell is this shit? Um, yeah, no, they're, they're, no. Most of the people that he singled out are friends of his. Uh, to what extent what they're doing, a lot of them have sexual, like, some type of past of them being, uh, they sexually harass someone, or they were with minors, or, you know, whatever, 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 or some other questionable behaviors, um, and then one guy, I don't know, some, what was his name, Rich Graft, or something, Rick Graft, or something, I don't know who he is, but that's another guy that he was zooming in on. And I was like, I, I looked at him. I was like, that dude's weird. Like, he doesn't have a lot of information. But he was, like, somehow part of the the crime family. Like, something weird. Like, he was, he grew up with them. I don't know what the hell over there. I was like, I don't know what their thing is. Uh, there was no thing on him being accused of anything of Me Too. But there's also no pictures of him with anybody. That's why I was like, ah, I don't know. I can't tell you why the hell that he would be in this relationship, like have some type of closer relation. Because that's really what that indicated. Is like so far, everybody that that tape, that specific one, are people that he has a very, a, a closer relationship with. Like somebody, like they did something, he has some work thing with them, he's hanging out with them. Like, Angelina's jo Jolie's dad, so when he comes into town, they actually hang out, like, that whole thing. But some of these other people, it's like, he didn't really bring them up. You know, when you're talking about uh, Mel Gibson's ex, she was in there, the Russian. Um, who else is in there? Um, 
Corey Feldman, it's so funny. Like, they don't even tape him. Like, I even looked on other people's videos. Like, I'm looking, I'm like, I know that these people were there, so nobody even interviewed him. Because, <laughs> but then you see him later at other events, and he's talking to Lou, right? So, you know, there's a, there's a relationship, but it doesn't look like, um... I'm just saying with the appearance of it, like the appearance could be wrong. I'm just saying the appearance, it just looks like they're kind of like on a lower level of just like, maybe they're trying to hang out and they're just like, they just know each other because they're just kind of like, hey, what's up, blah, blah, but not, not involved in maybe something else on a deeper level, but they could be. I just, I'm just looking through stuff and I'm trying to figure out like, okay, why would somebody have these relationships with him? Because some are so odd that it's like i don't even know because you you do have a lot of like married couples and so i'm like well maybe these are the people that want this that are into this longevity cult thing so maybe that's why he's so close to that like something's there right doesn't mean that they're raping children with him or something but those people would definitely have seen him with young girls that's what i'm saying so whatever they're seeing they're just like um to each their own i guess it's fine like they don't even care about the human trafficking part that's what i'm saying i go it's not really a situation where you wouldn't see that and i think that's exactly what the like the cosby victims and them they're just like well it happened to me when i was 12 so why should i care about this you know i don't know like they just haven't come to it but they were literally in the middle of it. I don't believe for a second that none of them saw that. Because they're literally showing pictures. And there is there is a lot of kids there. Some of those kids could be children of, you know, the actors and things like that. But when you start seeing Peter and some old man. And he's like arm in arm with the 15 year old or some shit. It's like, yeah, well, you know. What, what are you going to say about that? You're at the same event. It's a public event. So you're seeing it. So uh, can you explain? Like, what's going on? There's going to be a lot of people pulling that whole thing like, I had no idea what her age is. Didn't care. Exactly. You know, like those people, they didn't care. They were not bothered with it. And that's exactly what happened in 2001. That's what I was saying. It wasn't a thing where they were calling me a liar. They were okaying adult men preying on minors. And I was so out of my mind with that. I was like, what? what? And like somehow, and, and I wasn't, I was not agreeing to any of this. Like there's a whole thing to our thing. There was a lot of adults that made this situation happen. That's why I was like, wow, um, I'm really pissed. And it was something that FBI could have found out a long time ago because it was like, I had no idea that even the beginning portion wasn't even legal. Because I was told otherwise. And then when the court went to go look, I was like, wow. Um, that's a mind fuck. Um, I was always told that it was a legal process and I did this thing. And then they, 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 my, they set up this thing with the guys. So I was like, I, that's not me. I didn't pay for it. You could even check. I didn't pay for that. How can I go pay for a rental when I'm a minor? And from a whole other area I'm not even from. Like, I was like, wait, what is going on here? And so they didn't do anything. They were just like, oh, um, we don't do, I don't know. They wanted me to go do my own investigation first. First. And then, and then we're just kind of like, um, and then, and then, you know, then we might. But there's a bunch of things going on here because... My information was sent to them and the stupid piece of shit woman at FBI is a different person than who probably got the information. So, with that in mind, I don't know who got the other information. So that's also scary too because they, they're getting busted for raping a bunch of women. So I don't know who has that. It's not the lady that I spoke to, and she didn't even pull it up, okay? I was like, yeah, I sent this, th I told her. And then she's like, oh, you're going to have to do all this first. Like, she's the one that gave this information. She should literally be fired. This woman, I want to sue the fuck out of who told me that. Um, But she, they did all that. 
And I don't know who has it. See, this is the problem with it, because there's a lot of shady-ass motherfuckers in here. And so then Trump's people came in there. And mind you, Trump had a relationship with some of the predators in here, right? They are in this. So having that going on with this corruption that's going on out in this other thing. And Trump was literally out here at a restaurant with Manucci, whatever his damn name is. So they're hanging out here. Before he got, you know, before he got elected, they were hanging out at a restaurant with a guy with the same last name as the other Russian dude. That's why I was like, what? I don't, are they related? I don't know, but then they started outing him. Like, they were just like, oh, yeah, we have all these celebrities that come here. And then they're like, oh, Trump and Mnuchin, whatever that stupid other guy's name. And they're like, yeah, they came here and they were eating, you know, whatever. Like, they're trying to be all big time, you know, like, but they kind of outed him, you know, in this thing. And I was like, what the hell? Because I was trying to research the other guy. Because there was allegedly, like, some Russian mafia bullshit going on out here. And then, uh, as early as the time I came here. And then the guy that they took in had a passport. And he was Russian. So, he even went by the name Russian whatever, you know. And I, I didn't even know anything about that. I was just like, I, I mean, I knew the name. I knew that. But I didn't know anything about, like, they had this passport and then some fake other stuff and credentials. And then he had bombs or some shit. And, I mean, there was literally bombs where I was at. I was like, well, I have no idea, you know. They didn't even ask me. They didn't even. They made sure they tried to keep me out of this whole story. And I was like, wow, that's craziness. And then they didn't. I don't know why it didn't get associated with the Michael thing. Because that was the whole way that they were luring everybody to their house. And I was just like, okay, this is craziness. So we're children at the time. There's several children that went there, right? So then they kept that all out of the media. And then they, but they knew that's the craziest thing. I was like, no, because they were talking to me and I told them when they came, I go, yeah, this guy. And then the guy, the guy is now in Wisconsin. I'm like, how's the guy in Wisconsin? Shouldn't he be in prison? Shouldn't he be dead? Like, I mean, because he did have a lot of people wanting to kill him, but he's like in Wisconsin now. Like, so you're letting that predator dude just go there. Like, and then, and then the long list of people that died around him, and the couple of those celebrities, I like, dude, but that guy is the one that would literally sell off your dead body just to get money to do whatever bullshit. Like, that guy's such a sociopath, he makes up stuff, so now he's making up a new life story when he went over there. And I was like, that is some crazy stuff. I thought that guy would be dead. I was like, for certain. Or in prison. One of those two things. And no, he's out there making up that he's this virtuoso player. It's just crazy stuff. Let's see. Anyways, because of all these things Epstein was getting involved in, I don't think it's necessarily easy to assume that anyone who was taking money from him or engaging in his agenda automatically has clean hands because they did not know... Wait, they did not personally know him um i would first assume that most of these people actually do know what's going on most of these people most these people have no problem with it because the more information that's coming out i was like okay there's no way because i knew okay if i'm having a problem with it and seeing what's going on and having people put me in situations it's not a thing where, like, nobody knows, okay? It's a thing where everybody's fine with it, you know? So I don't really believe, like, you know, when they started doing that whole Harvey thing, I was like, ah, you know, Harvey seems like he was always a pig, like, just even talking to him. I think that issue is more of the women that actually put up with it think it's totally okay, some of those actions, and we're just like, what? Isn't it totally normal that he would just, like, grab my butt sometimes, you know? Or, like, say... These piggish things, you know, like, you look hot. Would you want to eat? I want to F you and try to push you into a corner. And they're like, what? No, he was a good guy. Like, they might say something like that. Even though those things did happen. Even with this domestic violence thing. When they're like, the guy was totally nice. But then you go through their past. And they were really abusive. So, it's sort of like how they didn't, they didn't go. You know who didn't go to therapy. They need to go to therapy for those things because then it would be much easier for them to identify, oh, actually, the whole time, oh, they were abusive to me. That's kind of what's happening. That's totally what's happening. It's just like this sort of 
you're abused so long and then you didn't realize it. It's just like our job thing is like once we got out of that, I had to go read comments last night from these guys. Oh my god. I was like, it just brought it all back. I was like, you don't even realize how, just how bad this culture is until like you're out of it where you're not dealing with this room full of shit fuck men and then you go read it and it's just like oh my god I literally put up with that every day and they're still acting that way and then saying that we don't have a rape culture I'm like no you're literally posting that in 2021 you're still posting that shit you're still going into the job and acting that way to just random women yeah it's pretty bad and so for the last part of this before I forget so, interference with investigation. Jesus. Stem cells, Jesus, with his interference and making threats. This is really weird. So, on August 18th, during the investigation, when did I put that clip up? Because this must have been somewhere around that time or when I found it and I put it up and I was getting all that weird, all those weird comments and somebody put like, I'll take a bullet for him. It was me doing it. Ha ha ha. I don't know. But I'm like, okay, whatever, dude. Um, So, then it's like, uh, okay, victim number two notified the firm that she heard that Dr. DeGray emailed a mutual friend of hers and Dr. DeGray's recipient to discuss the investigation. Victim two reported she heard DeGray told the recipient, victim two, career will soon, will be over soon. So now he's starting to threaten career, so this guy's going crazy here. So he's all, if she did not take certain actions Dr. DeGray wanted, uh, victim two perceived this to be a threat against her, obviously. Evidence. We obtained and reviewed two relevant emails sent by Gray on August 11th and 12th. In them, Gray requested the recipient to advise victim two name and names, to name names, in other words, to identify a board or leadership member as the actual villain in the campaign against Gray. And Gray also gave the recipient inaccurate information about the underlying investigation into victim one and victim two claims. And Gray's emails are repeated here. I'm not even exactly sure who this other person, I don't know what this is going into because it, it was said earlier and I was trying to figure out why he's saying somebody else is involved when he's the one doing it to the girls. Like, I'm not, you know, something on the inside. I'm not catching. Uh, so it says, subject, please be careful. And he's so dramatic, you know. Word has reached me that you have rushed to judgment following the events of the past 15 hours. Please read this. So then he writes that post, right? So I put the links to the Facebook things where I just read some of the comments underneath it. Which I probably should have done at the end before. But anyway, and take particular note of the last paragraph. You're not doing anyone any good right now by fanning the flames. Least of all, victim two. <laughs> so then on August 12th, urgent job for you. You will thank me. Right, mate? If you care about your and my yes friend, victim two, you will listen up. There's a job you need to do that properly only you are in a position to do. Like, he's just so, like, just arrogant, demanding. The way he's just talking, largely because of your rush to judgment today that will have cemented her trust in you. The six-week investigation into victim two allegations against me has concluded. It was conducted by someone named Susan Ann Van Dermenden, D-E-R-M-Y-D-E-N. Look her up. Good luck to anyone who tries to paint her as a whitewasher. Uh, what? It has found not only that those allegations are 100% fictitious, but also that victim two's account of them in her post and her testimony to Sue Ann is what a grave inconsistencies and features that clearly suggest she was fed false information by a SRF board member, which you will probably also have inferred my, from my Facebook post last night. But then it was 
just me saying it. Like, when you go through this whole thing, like, there's, like, these facts and how, and what he said and what happened to the victims. But, like, this stuff is, like, this complete, like, gaslight. Like, if you didn't know what was going on on the outside, like, I guess he thinks he could just, like, manipulate everybody by saying this weird, twisted thing. Because that's the only thing I can get from it. I'm just like, hmm? The consequence, other than my reinstatement, obviously, is that a new investigation is being launched, again, by Sue Ann, but this time investigating SRF so as to identify the actual villain who's this other person. I have no idea what the hell's going on here. The existence of that new investigation is going to be made public tomorrow afternoon, unless it's drumroll, it is... Unless it's obviated, aborted by new information, I probably don't need to spell out anything more. Victim 2's career is absolutely over, as things stand. And the only reason it actually isn't is because I am a man of honor. Oh my god. Who refuses to let somebody, especially a me meteor... <laughs> A uh, rising star be burned at the stake while an actual villain gets away scot-free and is thereby emboldened. Yes, she will have to take some lumps for being so gullible, but that's not such a big deal. But what will completely torpedo my rescuing of her is if she is seen to be resistant, resisting the identification of the actual villain. So now, as tomorrow, Thursday morning, is the time when Victim 2 needs to find her mojo and spill the beans. As of now, a few people are in, are in the frame as the culprit. Victim 2 needs to name names and fast so that no one gets to know that this new investigation is... They just asked me to join them. They literally posted to my email... Um, or not my email, on my page, but I didn't even get this message till later because somebody was asking me if their comment went to my spam and nothing was in my spam folder and I didn't even see this comment come up and I was like, what in the heck? And somebody thumbed him up. I was like, okay, now. So there's a guy named Louis Dominguez. He goes like this. If it is true, then we have to accept that we are human beings and that we all make mistakes. Look, what they say about Jesus Christ. Jesus defended the prostitutes from the religious because they wanted to stone her and for defending it, the crucifixion was sought. I know that Jesus and Aubrey have nothing to do with it, but the most important point of sense is that Humanity needs a man like Aubrey for people to change their pharaonic, I guess, ideology, which has been doing nothing for two millennia. For what? They, I mean, I'm serious. These words, they just go on and on. Uh, for what the world really needs to may that may that dreams come true. If Aubrey hasn't killed anyone, everyone should join Aubrey. I'm like, oh fuck no! What is this shit? Aubrey that day passed the glass, and a drunk man sometimes knocks down the table of other people's homes. If he said something inappropriate, but he hasn't touched them, we can't throw mud at him because of a mistake he made. There are people who do worse things, and nobody has told them anything. You should give Aubrey... They're asking me to give Aubrey some advice. I was like, um, to fuck off. So he's like, you should give Aubrey some advice at... That is that next time look for some prepaid girls and so no one has or can say anything because Jesus himself was the one who defended them. Don't tell me this ain't no cult. They're like literally asking me to join in and go protect him and basically go uh, advise him how to treat women. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. And then degrades women at the same time. Go get some prepaid girl. I was like, dude, I don't, this shit right here. There's obviously human trafficking going on. We already know that Peter is human trafficking girls. Now, the question here in this is that who's, who's, who's the puppet master? Because if you look at Peter, um, he started getting into, I think some of the things that he said early on was that he got interested in that clone dolly, that damn sheep. And they're all sheep in here. 
Um, I think it was like in 96. So you wouldn't have any like crimes per se like this probably too much before that unless there's some other stuff going on I haven't even I, I have never dived in this field of cloning and stem cells and crap so at that point he said he got like obsessed with it now I don't know how far back if there was anything before that I don't know and I don't know what year it was that Michael went to his house like they have the photo but there's no date it could be it could be in that early 90s it could be before that thing because if it was before that thing, then maybe it had nothing to do with this. It's just a question because it's like the dates are important when he got involved in this. Because at some point, Peter is the dumbass. That, and there's other there's another billionaire that um, followed another cult leader that raped a bunch of boys. So I had already done a thing on that where he was like, oh, it's if it, even if it's true, I don't care. I'm still going to follow him, right? He was giving him millions of dollars, right? And he's related to the people, I think it was from the Hard Rock, right? The same group of people that they tried to send me over to, right? So there's there's two, there's, is there two guys or one? Two owner things? I would have to look again, but that guy is a creep and he looks like a straight up pedo anyway. But there's another guy in here that's a friend of his. It could be that Peter got sucked into it because they talked him into it because Aubrey was saying, he's like, we got to do anything necessary to get money from these donors and he was kind of treating them like they're nazis he's like talking about having women go have sex with the nazis to get information and then he's like and we should do anything in our power because this is war right so then it's him wanting to be a keith or near type and having whatever he needs to do to get the money from these billionaires right so that's how i was thinking i was like maybe it happened in that fashion where Peter's a dumbass, and he went and he sought out these people, because he's like, I'm so into this. And then, somehow, all this nutty stuff, he got involved in this cult. Well, it turned into a cult. Like, I don't know how it was at the beginning. This guy obviously has is so full of himself. There, He has a history, though, because I think he was from up by... Mountain View area or something? I don't know. I'm not pulling that right. I'm like almost sick of even talking about this guy. Anyway, so he's been going on for a while. But anyway, this is his mentality of people. It's like, I gotta get all this money for my own, own, own personal thing, right? So you could tell who's the, you know, kind of pathy son of a bitch is in here. The people are like, I don't really care about everybody else. Everybody else is kind of like a pawn. And so they're kind of a pawn in our game, and he really does not like women. I mean, he has, like, this sort of thing, like, they're just pawns. So he's definitely a sociopath of some sort. It's one of those things that we could probably never really prove anyway. But he's definitely on the path scale. We'll put it like that. Mm. And he's, he's, he's making up stuff, and he's gaslighting, and he's, you know, doing these things. And so I'm thinking that maybe Peter's the one that got sucked into this cult. And the people that we're seeing, maybe on the clips that Peter was showing of all these other people, that they are into the cult, too. Just like the Rainier thing, where they were going around Hollywood, sucking people in. This one's an easier thing to get sucked into, because you start going to people going, you want to live longer. You know what I mean? Hollywood and their damn shit, you know what I mean? So, um, it looks like that might be, it might be what's going on is where they just approach like these older couples because there's some older people that I'm looking at and I'm like I don't think they're part of some little child orgy you know what I mean they look like they might have interest in the the youth thing but that could include that they don't really have a problem seeing older people with younger kids because Peter was really stressing that He's like, oh, and I have a lot of young people around, which helps me stay young. And these people start getting obsessed with that. And this guy supposedly is like a little, like a Jesus to them. It's pretty crazy. I, I had no idea we'd stumble on this. I just know that when I saw the video, I was like, okay, I know for sure this is through Peter's lens. Peter's showing me the people that are special to him. And... Um, it's not something you could get from the media because the media was just showing, you know, all the photographers take all these pictures everywhere. But 
it's like I specifically Peter's camp is like I want to show the public these people because they're my buddies they're my friends these are the people I want to expose um, as my circle that these are the greatest guys right nobody knows who half the guys are you know like on that video who the hell knows Danny Danny Fitzgerald or whatever that fool like the only people that know who he is is like Justin Bieber because he's running his house. Like they barely talked about him, and then he came up again for that that party house, right? Then he came. Uh, that's about it. I'm like, that's about it. I don't. I think only a bunch of rich people in private like might know who he is because he's running out a house or had a party with a bunch of kids. Something weird, right? So then these other people, it was like, who are these? these college um i don't know they're like teachers like these from the colleges it just all these people and it's like isn't this like a movie event like who what it's so bizarre so seeing and reading stuff like this like there's nothing normal about these comments to me there's nothing normal about saying you're going to take a bullet for aubrey there's literally nothing normal about aubrey talking about himself like he's a general and he needs to go off because this is war it's war dude and we can we should be able to go human traffic women whatever and then the comments under the link that he posts it's like dude the comments under there are just as psychotic people were not even going on about peter like that that's why i was like they're not even talking about peter dude they're like this guy is the god I think they respect Peter if they know him. They were even saying they're the one guy. He's like, I don't, I never met Peter. I met his son, but I didn't, I didn't meet Peter. So there's a lot. That's why I was saying it's a little complicated because it's almost like Peter has this um, worshiping thing. I don't know if this. I don't know all the details yet about their research thing because it sounds like everything's really unethical. Which you know. This guy's like, it's war. We're willing to do anything. We're willing to sacrifice women. We're willing to go and test little kids' sperm out, okay? There's literally a story that came out earlier where he was trying to take the embryos of the girls to use for stem cell research. So I was like, there you go! Like, do we have to even question that it's probably, it's probably true that he did this stuff? I was, you know, people heard it originally and were just like, that sounds like something that would be like an inquirer or something. I was like, well, no shit, but there, there's actual some substance to this because these people want to live forever. And even if they can get some extra years on their life, they feel like the clock is ticking. So they need to hurry up. So by removing this guy, they feel like you're they're removing a god. Like you typically see this like in a religious cult type thing, but this is more like I mean it basically is, but it's not like a religion. It's like a cult because they they think like he has some answer and some way that he's going to keep them living forever. It is the craziest thing I <sighs> That's why it's probably more similar to the Keith thing because he kind of ran off the LOA stuff, right? Where it was just like, whatever we believe we're going to create. I don't know. He totally ran off that whole LOA cult of Ram Ramtha. Is that how you say your name? Anyway, he ran off that whole thing from way back when. And there's a whole city that literally is in that cult. And I think we did a whole thing on that. So some of the people that worked on the movie... That I even originally saw in the little theater out in, where the hell was that? I think it was out in, in Rancho Cucamonga. I think it played at a little th thing out there or something. One of my friends wanted me to go with her, I think. Because I think they're the ones that brought it up to me. And I was like, oh, that would be interesting. I'll go. Like, I'm, I'm you know, like that. I'll go. Let's go check it out. And so one of the people that was working on that, I guess, then got involved in the Keith Grenier cult because it's basically the same stuff. This here, though, seems a little different than that because it's just about, I guess it's running off the fear of death and then them wanting to live forever. So I guess, I guess that's the pull, I guess that's the draw, you know, because it's not like, 
there's, there's it doesn't sound like there's a religion in it other than I was I mean I was honest to God kind of like I knew there was something wrong with these guys but when I said I go oh there's Jesus it was kind of uh, I don't know that's how I read people I was like that's it and then and then very much <laughs> they're treating him like Jesus and they're even using the analogy of Jesus Christ I was just like I you know <laughs> uh-huh yeah the other guys are just creepy like I honest to God I have no I the you know the Cuban uh, philanthropist is probably one of their donors because why is he showing that guy like I'm just you know there's some reason I'm just like what what what's the the connection here like why you know he's not one of the doctor guys you know but maybe he's one of the guys that's giving them a lot of money because he too wants to join the cult of Aubrey but maybe there's some other people in here that's like Aubrey that they're worshiping in the same way. And so we have to kind of get some more information because there was some other people in the group. But when they show this picture of all these people together um, on a video, it had Aubrey and then Peter and then all these other people. So it may just be like these two idiots because Peter has the most, one of the people that has the most money other than Bezos has way more money than all of them so they were trying to work Bezos and I don't know if he's a dumbass that actually started giving them money and then got sucked into this cult it's possible they they literally did a clip and it was talking about how they were you know what I'm gonna find it really quick because it had a weird comment about them testing on or taking kids blood and testing that on adults but it doesn't give you any details of like um, how is, is this consensual? This doesn't sound like a consensual thing of what kid allowed this, you know? Like, how is this even going on? It's kind of this weird... When asked how many more years they would like to live if they could stop aging after 25, most people revealed they had a threshold and limit. It turns out the majority of people don't actually want to live forever. Only 57% say they would only want another 100 years or less. The age group that is more likely to ask for 51 to 100 more years are those 60 years of age or older. As people age, they tend to think of time as more precious than their younger counterparts which makes this anything but conclusive since everyone will eventually become old and believe that they need more time in this world. Previous attempts of billionaires trying to live forever were largely in connection with blood transfusions. While this may seem like something straight out of a sci-fi horror movie, there are companies out there performing trials into the effects of transfusing blood from young, healthy people into those who feel that they're getting on in years. That's not to say it was restricted to the elderly since anyone age 35 and up is viable. Yeah, it said that and I was like, uh, what do you mean by young? And then you know, you know the whole thing with Peter collecting samples and I'm like, what, why is this video here? to begin with they were actually thinking that Bezos stepped down to then go to want to join in this whole thing I was like I could see it like he may be that nuts dude this video looks like okay. alright I think we're good hi Aubrey how are you thanks for coming today I'm well thank you thank you for having me you're very very welcome I don't uh, now, I know that you're not big on intros. I just wanted to give a little bit of a background. Um, Is this Peter's friend? Oh, no. I don't know what's in this clip, but they're all... Some person's calling him out. They're like, he's been saying 15 years for a bit now. Why does he say 15 to 20? Very concerning. Somebody else comes in. They're like, no, he hasn't. He said 25 years in the mid-2000s. And said it was a bit off, but he hasn't really changed the trajectory. And then somebody else comes in, they go, He said if they got enough funding, it could happen that fast. Unfortunately, they have got very little funding, so of course things take more time. Does this not sound like the biggest scam? Like, I don't know what he said in the thing. I really, ugh, the thought of even sitting for 40 minutes listening to Aubrey just makes me want to barf. Um, but... It sounds like he made some sort of, um, I don't know if it means that they're going to progress or be able to advance uh, living longer or something. I don't know. 
because they're not very specific, but, and, and it's not coming true, dude. It's like a Corey Feldman line. It's like, give me 10, 10 million and I'll tell you all the names. Yeah. The, and I, and we already know what he just said. Like he got exposed in the send thing, but I'm like, the send thing is a total cult. Like the whole thing about it with him being in it, because this is what they're saying, what it represents. And that's why I'm like, okay, that it's different than wanting to, I don't know, I do find a difference in people just, like, looking how to live a little longer. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if they just want to see if you could live 20 years longer. Who the hell wants to live 100 years longer? Dude. But just, you know, how being healthy and living a little past 100, that whole thing. Looking younger skin stuff that stuff saying the rest of this is living forever because they literally were going at me online of going who wouldn't want to live forever you sound like you're being sarcastic i'm like no i would i have no <laughs> i was like no I, I wouldn't want to and even on the clip that weird clip that they were thinking that bezos is going to come in um, the, they were saying, like, most people didn't want to. They just want to add some years on their life, right? But that's not, that's not a cult thinking. This is a cult. Like, I don't know what he's promising in this, but then he wants all the money. So I think he's just looking for ways to get, I don't know, maybe be as rich as freaking Peter just for no freaking reason. And then just keep, you know, you could just keep on trailing this forever going, we're almost there. We're not quite there. We're almost there. And I'm, I don't know. And then doing all these unethical researches on the young. Like, who's the young? That you're taking blood transfusion. Do that shit. That's why I was like, oh my god. Oh my god, please tell me this is not going on. I can see it going on. And it would be like a newer... Uh, I know the blood... They were even saying the blood transfusion thing wasn't new or something, but... The other stuff is, and I'm like, ah, you know, these are like newer crimes, like some of the stuff in it, so I don't know if there's even, it, there's got to be some legal thing to be able to go after. Like, what if they did this to me, like I'm a kid, right, and then they, let's just say they do the whole thing and try to steal my embryo, I don't know. And then they go and do some research on it and then start cloning a bunch of kids, like, with it. I don't know what the hell they're doing with it, but that's what they're saying. That was, like, one of the best things to get, actually, is from the women, is that. And then, and then, and then they do something, and then now what? I mean, that's just, like, rape. I mean, it's another form of it, but... I mean, that's just some crazy stuff. Like, you start really thinking about this because it's real. It's the possibilities of this type of thing because science is getting advanced enough to where we're going to start seeing these other crazy crimes because no matter what men will always do something horrible to people so um this is one of those things and i'm just looking at it i'm just like geez this is like blowing my mind because it's not even like a case that i've ever gone through so it's a newer thing to me and it's probably going to be newer to some other people um yeah, they just, it's so bizarre that people just actually discount it, like, that it's not going on. I was like, <laughs> you're not dealing with these people, these cult people. They're, 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 they're very interesting. It's kind of, it's, it's like when we were, we were doing the, the Mormon story, the one with the two idiots that killed the kids. When I was getting all these comments from these um, I, I guess they were part of that, they may have been part of the group, and then some were not, some were attacking them, and some were saying weird things, and, uh, I don't know, uh, this tops that, we'll just put it like that, this tops that, so I have to deal with that when I even talk about these things, so I was, I was like, mm, yeah, no, this one, you'll take a bullet for him. You'll jump off a building for him. Like, these people, well, they're not going to jump. Why would you take a bullet for him when you're trying to live forever, dude? Come on. I don't know, but they seriously think, like, he's a god figure, so he, they would sacrifice themselves and make sure that he could save the rest of the world, basically. So, yeah, read the comments under it. So, anyway, there was a lady under there. She was like, ah, this feels like a cult. I was like, yeah, because it is. So, then, then they were kind of going back and forth and... 
Yeah, no, and the women on here are just crazy. Crazy. They're like, you, you, this, like, they were saying that they would be nothing without a bag. I'm like, okay, I, that's it. There's literally no human. I'd be going on like this. Nobody, none. Not one single person. You would be nothing. I think he needs to be arrested, though. Um, they need to look into this, and it's a total cult, and he's, like, trying to human traffic women out. Like, y'all call me stem cell Jesus? Alright, that's it.